Hey, y'all, this is Teresa. And Mark. And we're your hosts for... Tell Me That Story. Where we tell y'all true stories of real life happenings. So stick around. You never know what you might hear. I really wanted to talk about our infertility journey today. In 2001, January of 2001, did I get that date right, Mark? I think so, yeah. Okay, in January 2001, you and I were both down at the front of a church. At a revival. Yeah, we went down there, and we were standing side by side, and there was a visiting evangelist that was coming up, and he was going to pray for people, and you and I walked down there. Yeah, it was a little country church way out in the woods out there close to where we lived. Right. And I can even back up further than that in a second, but um, this particular date really stands out in my mind. And if you heard us on the last podcast, we were talking about stuff that, you know, just kind of unusual stuff. Well, we actually had something that was very, very unusual that happened to us at that moment. It happened to me at that moment. And There was a couple of days that I didn't even discuss it with you, Denmark. No. no. I was so afraid of what had happened that I was afraid that you would think I had really lost my mind. Yeah. But what happened, I'll just tell y'all, it was very exciting for me. It was a little scary. So I had my eyes closed. And so, you know, when you close your eyes, everything is black. And all of a sudden, I was standing there and white capital letters appeared before my eyes and the capital letters said baby and underneath was lowercase letters and it said you will have your own yep it really blew me away and so there I was and I thought I am not going to tell anybody what I just saw and I'm going I'm to take you back just a little bit now from that so we had come through uh, so much. If you've heard any of our other podcasts, you'll probably hear some about um, some of the other things that we've gone through with Mark having cancer and things like that. We were married and I was 18 years old and Mark was 21 years old. And right after we got married, Mark was diagnosed with cancer. And we'll talk about that on another podcast. But we were ended up being told that we could never have children. They said Mark could never have children. I could never have children because of the things that I had gone through. Um, And together, it was totally, totally, absolutely 100% impossible is what the doctor said. It wasn't that correct, Mark? Yeah, uh, the the chemotherapy that I went through kind of mess things up and he said it's just not going to happen y'all need to check into adoption because it's not going to happen period and and I had had um, severe endometriosis and I'd had uh, a lot I'd gone in there and they had cleaned out the endometriosis several times and just all those things that you had cysts on your ovaries too the size of a grapefruit yeah yes but we we went through I went through an extreme depression for quite a few years and uh, we were married in 1989 And so we're fast forwarding right now to 2001. We had just started singing gospel music. I'm going to say the latter part of 2000. And so here we are in 2001. And I saw that. Well, two days later, we were at home and I told Mark that I couldn't stand it any longer. I had something that happened that I just felt like I needed to share with him. I needed to tell him I was a little apprehensive because I felt like he would think I had lost my mind. So I told him what I saw. And I want him to tell you what he told me after I told him that I saw everything black. And then I saw the white capital letters that said baby and lowercase letters that said you will have your own. And this is what he said to me. I saw the same thing. I did. I saw the exact same. And I tell you what it what it looked like. Do you remember back when they had the commercials that says got milk and they had the big billboards and had the black background with just the white letters, that, big block letters that says got milk. Absolutely. It looked exactly like that, but it exactly. said baby. And then underneath it said you will have your own. Exactly. I saw it just as plain as day. So my mouth was, it really dropped open and I was so relieved. <laughs> and that was a confirmation. So God works in mysterious ways. And like I said, we had already been singing for 
I don't know, less probably less than three months, wasn't it? Mark? Yeah, it hadn't been long. So that happened. That was so exciting. And you know, in our little finite minds, we think in our timetable that that's going to happen immediately. Yeah. But it didn't. But it didn't. It didn't. But it gave us faith. It just it just increased our faith. I just think, I mean, God blessed us so much to give us that word of encouragement and and that promise. And we've we had to hold on to that promise for quite a few years. So we started, you know, we were really the the doors were opening for us to go and sing. And we began just to do that more and more. And the joy of the Lord is what the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so we were able to begin to, you know, sing and kind of for a time that kind of became like a baby. (laughs) It was like the joy of the Lord came us came over us and we were able to sing and testify and just tell a God's goodness and tell what God said was going to happen. Now, we didn't tell everybody, but through all these years, there was times when we wouldn't tell the story. And what would happen, Mark? Somebody would come up to us, you know, in another state that didn't know us from Adam. And we had not told the story. And had not told them anything. There's no way they could have known it. And they would walk up to us and say, God said to tell you he's going to give you the baby he promised, but it's not time yet. Right. He's, it's in his time. And he has a work for you to do first. Right. And that happened multiple times. It yes. wasn't just once. We had that happen several times in different states by yes. people that didn't know each other or know us. There's no way they would have known it other than God showing them. Right. Absolutely. So it, it was so amazing. And so we just kept holding on to that faith. Now... I went out at one point and I purchased a, I believe in putting your faith to action. And so um, I went out and I purchased like a name card. And on the back of that name card, I remember writing a note to the baby that I was promised that I was going to have. And I wrote a note and I'm like, this is from your mother. And uh, I just held on to that and kept that in my, um, in my pocketbook everywhere I went. I had a prayer cloth that that I would keep with me at all times, and I would constantly uh, thank God for the promise that he had given me that we were going to have one day. And, you know, every now and then, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that sometimes we wouldn't get sad. Um, Sometimes you wouldn't try to, like a depression, try to fall upon you. But it wasn't like it was before we saw that little sign. Yeah. And that goes back to something you said a minute ago about faith. You know, we traveled all over the country telling people, God said we were going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. But we went for years. Absolutely. Nine years. And I'm going to be just completely transparent. There were some times my faith was tested. Yeah. I thought, Lord, you know, I know what I saw. I know what we heard. Where is it? Right. You know, I think as humans, anybody that tells you they've never had doubts in their faith, I don't think they're being honest. Yeah. Because that's just the human side of us, you know. I know I was thinking the other day about about this, about faith. And, you know, when my when my dad passed away, I prayed and prayed and prayed, God, please don't let my daddy die. Please don't let my daddy die. And I had full faith Yeah. that he was going to make it, but he died. Yeah. And it knocked my faith for a loop. I mean, it, it knocked it down several notches for a little while. And you don't realize, I mean, that's ultimate healing. He did have ultimate healing, which is getting to go to heaven, and we know where he's at. Yeah, but sometimes our faith will be tried, but have, but you just have to stand strong on your faith and on the on God's word and just stand on those promises. Yeah. But it was so incredible how so many times maybe we would start feeling a little bit down, and that's when God would send someone along to strengthen us once again. Yeah. But Mark, I wanted to I wanted to take just a second and talk about what happened also at a moment that we had maybe where we were a little bit wavering. You know, I don't want it to sound like we were full extreme. We had one we had a moment, remember, and we we were in the church practicing. We we were in a little church and we were practicing our our little group. And we had considered doing some artificial insemination, but not a soul knew about yeah. our consideration. Yeah, I, had, I had forgotten about that. Had this. you? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we had considered, and nobody knew it, not at all. <laughs> yeah, we had considered that, and we had considered um, 
in vitro in vitro yeah yeah, yeah. drugs I, and you know yeah and so um anyhow so we were just kind of i guess you'd say mulling it over kind yeah. of thing you know so we were sitting in this little church, so nobody was there. It was a practice time. And all of a sudden, the door s- swung open, and this lady uh, walked in. And she sat on the back row and just sat down. And we finished singing the song that we were singing. And she was smiling and just a very attractive younger lady uh, and smiling. And I know God sent her there. If, if those people were not there for any other time, they were there for us. And so send her there and we finished the song. We walked back to the back to introduce ourselves. We didn't know if she's somebody off the street or, or what. And come to find out they were a brand new pastor uh, of the church. And they had just moved into the parsonage next door. Something had happened to the sewer system or something. And she came over there just to uh, use the restroom for a minute. And here we were at that moment, you know, singing. So she's sitting there and she said, who's Teresa? I mean, that was the first words out of her mouth. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do now. I had forgotten about it. She specifically said, oh, I got to see if I can do this without crying. She called me by name and said, who's Teresa? And I said, me. And she said, God said to tell you, you know what he has promised you. Do not do what you're thinking about. Don't put his work in the hands of doctors. That's the word. That's what she said. That's the exact words. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Don't put his, say that again, Mark. Don't put his work in the hands of doctors. Absolutely. She said, I don't know if that means anything to you. And I started to cry, and I said, it, it does. And even the girl that was singing with us at the time, I don't— I, She we, didn't even know. We hadn't no, told her. We had not told anybody. And so we knew right then that we couldn't pursue any other avenue, you know, right. for that. Because it wasn't time yet. No. We still had a work to do. Right. So I want to talk about another little time on that journey— And it was a little while later, and I remember that I ended up going to the doctor's office because I I just felt like I needed to. And they ended up doing a blood test, and they told me that it came back as a faint positive. Do you remember that, Mark? Yeah, I do. A faint positive pregnancy test. And I had, you know, they pretty, they knew me by name. I mean, I would go in there so often. <laughs> but they did a blood test this particular day, and it came back faint positive. So I went on to work, and I was a beautician, and I was standing there, and I ended up having to call the doctor because I ended up spotting, and called the doctor, and they said, go home and lay down immediately. So I canceled everything that I had as far as appointments, and I went home, and I got on the couch. And after that, that night, we had a group of people that ended up coming over praying for us. And the Lord spoke to one of those and and gave us a word through that that strengthened us because we knew that we believed that it was a baby and that we lost that baby during that time early, early, early. And hardly anybody at all um, knows that part of our story. I mean, we've only... A very, very, very select few people um, know that. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of people would have gotten upset, but I didn't. I thought. It strengthened our faith. Yeah. It was sad. This is just God saying it's it's possible. Right. I'm showing you that it can happen, but it's just not time. Just hang on. And that's, that's the words that God gave through one of those girls that was there praying with us that night was... How many times have I told you that I love you? How many times have I told you over and over again, you know, that I'm going to do this for you and you need to hold on and trust in me. And even though I know that I have a baby in heaven, that like I said, nobody knows this story. I know that there's another one there that I will get to meet and put my arms around one day. And so that strengthened us. And we went from that moment on with the joy of the Lord as our strength because it rose up within us 
more than I can ever even tell you. What is that that says, Mark? Joy unspeakable. And full of glory. That's right. And that's what we went with, didn't we, Mark? (laughs) Yeah, for several more years. Full joy. Yeah. And I got tears streaming down my face right now, but um, full joy. And, uh, And that's what we went with. And people would say over and over again, you have the most beautiful smile. When you're up there and you're singing, you just glow. And it was the joy of the Lord because I knew what he had promised. And he was not going to let me down. So nine years passed. Well, everything wasn't positive. We did make the mistake of telling some family. And, you know, they were, oh, poor thing. She really believes she's going to have a baby. But the doctors have already told her it's not going to have. I'm talking about church people. Yeah, you're right. People that grew up in church. You're right. Don't have enough faith to believe God for anything. And Sit on a pew every single time every the door time is the open. Every time the door is open. But say, oh, well, you know what the doctor said. You just kind of, you know, it'll be okay. I want to say, I, get thee behind me, Satan. Look, I got over that dead bunch a long time ago. <laughs> they don't bother me anymore. Not me either. So anyhow, um, let's just fast forward. So I think we've been traveling, what, was it nine years Nine years, yeah. We ended up, we were at, <laughs> we were going to to sing somewhere. Um, let's let's back up just a little bit. Let's say you had gotten a phone call to see if we would be if we would take a child as a foster child for a yeah little, yeah yeah. And so, <laughs> Mark, we had always we had discussed all that, but Mark said, "There's no way we're not doing that because I know you'll get too attached, and then you're just going to go through that cycle of depression." And I don't, I don't want to do that. That's a no. Yeah, my cousin was dating a lady that had three little boys that were brothers. Yeah, and I won't get into all the details, but their mother had lost they she had lost her parental rights, and she couldn't handle all three of them. And me and that cousin were we were real close, and he said, "Would would y'all be interested in taking?" And I was like, I, "You know, I don't know." We he were approved. Was, we had gotten approved for adoption and everything. But, yeah, I said, know. "Well, let him just come stay with us a few days, and we'll see how it how it works out." You know, and he did. He was what, four. We gave him his fourth birthday party, so he was right at four years old when yeah. he came to to stay with us. But we'll kind of talk talk about him on another on another podcast. But so. I just wanted to quickly tell you that, okay, so we had found out about this foster child. We were in the process of letting, uh, going to start letting him come. He was coming and staying on the weekends. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. He was staying on the weekends with us. Well, so we didn't have him <clears throat> staying full time, but we were on our way to a singing. <laughs> and I said, whew, I said, turn that air on in my face. I said, I, I am so nauseated. And I looked at Mark and I said, oh, Lord, I said, wouldn't that be something? And if I'm pregnant right now, what if I'm pregnant right now? What? And Mark said, do not even say that. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a good time. <laughs> he said, do not even say that. I'm thinking, what? Like now we're fixing to get, you know, we're fixing to get this foster child. And <laughs> and and this is not a good time. And I said. I just had this huge wave of nausea. We made that singing. We finished that singing, and we got through. And on the way home, I was just extremely nauseated. And uh, we stopped and got a little test. Actually, the singer, <laughs> the singer, the girl that was singing with yeah, us, yeah, she ended up, she ended up going and getting a test and calling me and saying, "Come here, I've got you something." Yeah, <laughs> and I want you to take it. <laughs> and so um, I did, and it was very positive. Oh, very positive. Yeah. Very positive. And we were like, oh, my God. Well, I remember you walked out and you said, oh, my God, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> do another one. Do another one. Yeah, it, it hit at a, at a a weird time. I think God has a sense of humor. He does. You want kids? Here you go. <laughs> and, you know, not even that, Mark, but I'm go- it was six months before any of that happened. I am not telling you a story. I am telling you the honest truth. Six months before that happened, I started praying. I was like, God, you know what? I see the direction that this world is going in. I've changed my mind. 
I've decided that I don't want to have any kids. I've changed my mind because it's just a rough world out there and I don't want them to have to face stuff. And so, you know, forget all those prayers that I prayed. I've changed my mind. Yeah, oh my but gosh. we had been telling people for years what God has spoken. If he would have granted that wish, how would that have made him look? I know, but I was like, God, I don't want to, I don't want to put a kid through all that stuff. Yeah. Six months. And so when I come out, here I am. I did this pregnancy test and it's positive. I mean, like strong positive. (laughs) And we're getting this foster child. Okay. So I want to also say one more thing. How many times have we, when we would tell some of this story, would people say, oh, were you just relaxed? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you just relaxed, and that's what happened. You had no, to get. It was not a relaxed time. Yeah. It was stressful. Yeah, you just relaxed, and you just forgot about it, and that's what happened. Or you know, you had to get, um, you know, all these things, and I'm like, no, and it didn't have anything with get. So let me clear your mind. L- let me just let me just clear your mind here. It didn't have anything with to do with the foster child getting him first and relaxing. So if you got that in your brain, just take that out of your brain right now. Because there wasn't any relaxing during that time. It was no, but it was like a roller coaster. It was when you did the time span and they did the uh, sonogram and stuff. We were pregnant before we found out. Before we even knew about him. Yeah, yeah or I was pregnant. Yeah, yeah, you weren't, were you? No. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, you're pregnant together. You really are, honestly. <laughs> you went through a lot of stuff with me, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> but it was all worth it. Yes, it was. It was. It. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people would say that. And I was like, no, you you got to hear me. And that's why I want to just drive that home right now. It didn't have anything to do with that. We were already pregnant before we found out about even considering taking uh, the foster child. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what happened. And it's, it's, it's been a journey when you live for Christ. I mean, it's an incredible journey. It's fun. Yeah. Exciting. It's exciting to say the least. And it has its ups and downs. It's not, you know, people oh, yeah. think, oh, well, I get saved. Everything's going to be rosy. And no, it's, it has its ups you and downs. You still, still have, have life. St- it's still life. I've come to give you life more abundant. Yeah. Life it, is life. And it rains on the... The just and the unjust. There you go. But who you put your faith and trust but you in. you put your trust in God. And how... So he will help you walk through. Oh, absolutely. You know, he helps you walk through whatever it is. And he's there in the... He's there in the good times. He's there in the bad. We put our faith and our trust in him. And it, it was an exciting time. And people saw us. They they saw the whole thing. And, and even... Even in seeing that, some of them didn't want to believe it. And you know what, Mark? I don't feel like they even heard us. Like some of the family and close friends, I didn't feel like they even heard us. We were saying all this stuff for all these years. And after you found out you were pregnant, we had family people that started rumors that you had had an affair because there was no way that you could. There's no way I could father a child. And I was like. And I prayed, Lord, I want this baby to look so much like me that it (laughs) takes away any doubt. And, and it, it did. did. <laughs> I'm telling you, when that lady did that sonogram, she said, I have never done a sonogram that I could see that baby look so clearly like the father yeah. in a sonogram Her as this sonogram baby did. Her sonogram pictures looked exactly like my baby pictures after, you know, when I was a year old. It would it blow crazy. you away. Yeah. And so that that one person that that really said those things came to me. And apologized to me. Yeah. And said, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I said, I never did. I I, I was never unfaithful. Never, ever, ever was I ever unfaithful. And and they said, We we see that. And they said also because they had been unfaithful to their spouse, they just assumed that that's what maybe was what I did and the reason I was able to get pregnant. Yeah. And that wasn't it at all. Well, and she looked so much like me when she was a baby, but thank God she looks <laughs> like her mama now. <laughs> I think she looks like both of us. If she still looked like me, we would never have no grandkids. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Don't say that. 
<laughs> Anyhow, we'll go. We'll talk about some other stuff and get into more of adoption kind of things for we adopted our son and all that a little later. But this was just about infertility today, and uh, we want to encourage you. I mean, I feel like if you listen to us, you're going to hear a lot of encouraging stories. We we might make you laugh, we might make you cry, but through it all, we just we really want to be an encouragement to the body of Christ. We want those that maybe don't know the Lord Jesus as Savior and Lord for them to realize, hey, there's something different about these folks. There's something different, and I may need to check into that a little bit more. Yeah, and also to tell people, if if God has made you a promise, if God has told you something, Thank don't God. listen to the negativity around you. I can't stress that enough because there was so much, you know, people that tried to talk us out of that. Yeah. Well, you know what the doctor said, you know. I don't care what the doctors, you know, I appreciate doctors. I thank God for doctors. God gives them the wisdom to do what they do, but they're not the final authority. Right. They don't have the final say. But he does lead you in in a way, and he leads doctors in a way. So this is a little part that I didn't tell that I do like to say sometimes is I had had cysts on my ovaries the size of a grapefruit. I had uh, severe endometriosis where they had had to cut my uterus away from my backbone. I mean, they had cleaned out the endometriosis like three times with a laparoscopic surgery. But that last time, they had to cut my uterus away from my backbone. They said it had really grown too. And then they had to tack my uterus into place. And after I got pregnant and and, and after, uh, you know, right after I had the baby and everything, um, my doctor told me that I would not have been able to carry the baby to full term if they had not done that. He was the same doctor that had, you know, went in there and done all that. And I would not have been able to carry the baby to a full term if I had not had my uterus tacked into place because it was bad. And there was something else that I don't remember. It was medically that that went on. And then um, we'll get into more stuff about that later, about the birth and what happened after that, because we almost lost her. Um, But we'll talk about that on other podcasts. But today, we just wanted you to hear that that fertility journey and God's promise and how long it took. And we were married 19 years before our miracle arrived. Yeah. And we traveled all those years telling people what God had promised. And we traveled the nine years for nine years, telling people what God had promised and just hanging on to faith. And it, it was a struggle at times. I'll be honest, but through it all, we stood on that promise and we saw it come to pass. That's right, and <laughs> it's been a uh, it's been a journey since. I yeah. mean, she's been oh Lord, she's like she's a spitfire. <laughs> she is, yeah. <laughs> she's got a lot of your spunk, and but, yeah. She and I have a special bond that a lot of people don't understand. You know, we joke with each other, and people look at us like, "Why are you letting her talk to you like that?" It's just you know we joke around with That's each right. other so much, and. We just have a really just special bond. We're just really, really close. and Have fun. That's right. We have a lot of fun together. So we thank y'all for joining us today. I think we're going to wrap this up. Y'all uh, rate and review the podcast on whatever podcast player you're listening to us on. I think most of the podcast players have a link that says send us a text message. So send us a send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Love to hear what you think about our stories. And um, rate our podcast has got a place where you can rate it, where you can follow us, and that just helps us reach more people, helps get the helps us get the word out to more people. Yeah, we've even had some people that's reached out to us, and they want to end up coming on our show and being a part of our podcast someday. So we're probably going to do some of that when we can get set up for that. We're, we're still new in the process at the moment, so uh, as soon as we can get set up for that, then y'all will start hearing from some other people that, that they've got a, a story to tell, and we want to share it. Yeah, we've got some technical stuff we have to work through that I have to figure out how to do. I'm sure it's probably simple, but I'm not real good with this kind of stuff. Yes, you are. Don't even say that, you know. I'll I'll, I'll figure it out, and when I do, we'll have some guests on here. Yeah. And we got some guests that we're going to have just right here in the studio that are local that are just going to come in, but the other ones will be remote. Right. And i got to figure out how to do that. Yeah, so So send us a message. Um, Maybe you want to share your story with us. We would love to hear it. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for joining us today on Tell Me That Story, and we will see you next time. Be blessed.